Thanks for joining us. We're here to talk about the partnership between TELUS and Wind River. I'm delighted to be joined by Sushil Rawat, who's director for RAND Strategy at TELUS, and Scott Walker, who's global vice president for Telco at Wind River. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. For having us. So first of all, Sushil, tell us more about TELUS, what you do there, and this big announcement you made recently in Canada. Yeah, sure. So TELUS is uh, one of the three large telcos in, in Canada. Uh, I work as a director for Radio Access Network Engineering and, and uh, Operation. But yes, we made a, a, a huge announcement last week, which is really big for us. We, we announced that we're going to deploy open RAN technology architecture starting end of this year, or say Q4 of, of 2024, which will allow us to deploy 50% of our network with open RAN technology in next uh, few years. Uh, we deployed around 14, 14 sites in one of the urban areas uh, in Ontario, and we have been uh, monitoring, closely monitoring performance of, of those sites, and we're very happy and delighted that uh, the performance of those sites are so satisfactory that we have decided to migrate our rest of the network on on the open RAN and virtual RAN architecture. Great. Yeah, you know, I'll pick up on that performance comment that you made because Vodafone has been very vocal that open RAN is as good or better than traditional RAN uh, uh, performance. Um, and it's one of the key drivers in why they're adopting it very quickly. And when, as Wind River, we're very happy to bring some experience to tell us to help make, give you comfort that this, uh, this system would actually work because in some operators' minds, it's very risky to go from traditional RAND to open RAND. But now, as you've seen, it's, it's performing at scale. And that's why you've decided to move forward with an open RAND and VRAND solution. Yes, exactly. And it's a big announcement for the country. Indeed, it's the first 5G VRAN open RAN network in Canada. So what were the drivers behind the project? Uh, it's Canada. I would say it's North America's first true brownfield open RAN uh, deployment because we're not only doing virtualization of radio, we are also doing implementing a third party radio, which allow us to be open in terms of front hall as well. There are multiple drivers to it. And one of the most important driver is that uh, we are a very complex network overall because we have uh, frequencies and amount of spectrum that we have is is a bit complex and we had a very complex site design based on number of radios we had on our site with open RAN, we are able to simplify our site reduce the number of radios overall reduce the operational cost and energy that that we would consume on each side so open RAN will allow us to control and simplify our site, control our su supply chain. The, the diversification of supply chain is also very important to us. We, we all had experience in the past how that can be dangerous. So we, it, will, it will make us more supply chain resilient and also our focus and drive on, uh, on saving our capital expenditure, overall PCO saving, and also government, Canada's government also mandate us to do the network swap. So this gives an opportunity to, to deploy open and virtual RAN technology. Yeah, and this supply chain diversification concept that you bring up is very important. RAN has become very centralized down to just two players. And I think a lot of operators are nervous about what that means in the long term. So open RAN really does open up the aperture in terms of the number of suppliers you can look at to, to assemble your solution. So that's great news. So what are the benefits for your customers? With, for our customers, uh, first of all, Open RAN will allow us to, to make that disaggregation between hardware and software, which allow us to introduce new technologies much more faster. Right? Now we'll have uh, same performance from our, our new architecture. However, with softwareization, we will be able to introduce 5G advanced technologies, uh, even more innovative AI-driven technologies, which gives us uh, customer analytics. We'll be able to measure and visualize our customer experience better, which will basically give us more opportunity to improve their experience. So it helps us in multiple ways to also keep our network sustainable, also offer much more efficient and much more uh, experience-driven services to our customers with new introduction of technologies much more faster than the traditional RAN system. Yeah, so she mentioned something earlier about 
uh, vendor diversification in the ecosystem. Because when you buy a traditional RAND solution, you typically buy it from a single supplier. And I think you had incumbent suppliers even in the network today. Yeah. And what makes that difficult is you're taking a single appliance, you're breaking it into components, and that creates integration points that make it very dis difficult. I think TELUS chose Wind River because we ease those integration points both on the southbound side with hardware and northbound side with the RAN software by partnering with companies like Samsung and HPE to do that integration ahead of TELUS consuming that solution. So the press release mentions deploying existing and new network environment. Can you tell us how you expect it to work? So as I said, we, we have a government mandate to swap or replace our existing supplier base due to different reasons. Uh, we, we are in process of already you know, fulfilling that obligation toward government. So as part of our network swap program, we have already swapped half of our network with the traditional equipment. But at this point in time, when we found that the maturity of overall solution has reached a level where we can, uh, where, where we can incubate this technology, we are making this strategic decision to move from our traditional deployment to more open random-based deployment. So as part of the network operation, we'll continue to have both the technologies in place, traditional as well as open, uh, for, for some more time, right when we have next opportunity, to replace our hardware with truck rolls and whatnot. In future, we will be migrating the rest of the network to Oran as well, but we don't have a immediate reason to, to, to swap uh, equipment that we have recently deployed. So that's why we'll continue to have both the kind of architecture in our network. The press release also mentions performance results that validate the telco grade performance and reliability of multi-vendor open RAN technology. Can you expand a little bit further on that? Sure. And, uh, we have deployed uh, this uh, this solution in one of our uh, one of our markets, which are which is not a rural area; it's kind of a urban and, and city area. We have deployed about fourteen sites, and it has been operational for about a month now. And we have been very closely monitoring the performance in terms of voice quality, in terms of latency, speeds, and all the you know RAN indices and metrics that you look at. When we do a comparative analysis between our existing supplier and the equipment that was deployed in past, and after the cutover that we recently did, you can, you can immediately see where the baseline performance is. And what we are observing is on many areas, open RAN performs even better than traditional RAN. Uh, and on many areas, we are at par. So in no case, uh, open RAN have less capability than the traditional system which is very mature. I mean, there's nothing against traditional RAN. It's a very mature system. It works. But with Open RAN, we are able to achieve same maturity, and we are able to have, uh, you know, performance that our customer will be happy with. Yeah, performance has been a key criteria for any operator considering Open RAN. Vodafone, for example, has been very vocal about the performance of traditional RAN versus Open RAN, in all cases, 4G and 5G. And what we find is that if the integration points in the stack are well-tuned, that they actually can work generally better. And I think that's one of the reasons TELUS chose Wind River because of our experience with companies like Vodafone, KDDI, and Verizon that we've built this sort of rock solid ecosystem that they can count on and they can rely on as they continue their journey into open RAN. And Sushil, why did you decide to work with Wind River? There are many reasons to that, and one of the most important reasons is as part of uh, system integration for Open RAN, the agility to work, uh, capability to work with a supplier in a in a very close environment is very very important. Uh, as as we we are all aware of the fact that integration or system integration of ORAN stack is not plug and play today where we want it to be, but Whatever we have today, it is very, very important to have that close relationship with the supplier and have right set of uh, technical skill set as well as involvement from the company where you're working together and you're closely able to integrate the system. Wind River uh, is very unique and from that perspective, they have uh, you know, a lot of experience with real-time operating system based on where the company has grown from comes from a very uh, you know, real-time operating system kind of environment. 
uh, have a leadership that understand the telco environment. It, it, it's a two different worlds. The operating system, the virtualization world from IT and telcos are, are different. But I think Wind River uh, has experience working in both areas. So we find it very unique and very exciting for us to, to work with a company like Wind River, which has the right skill set, the right agility that we would uh, look for. Yeah, I would thank you for that, Sushil. And we appreciate the partnership and the opportunity to work with TELUS. Um, I think to pick up on what Sushil said, Wind River has a history, a 40-year history as a company working in embedded and mission-critical systems. We are focused on telco. We don't focus on IT like many of our, our, our competitors do. And that focus on, on IT is why we've been successful and why we're comfortable we'll be successful with TELUS as well. So, Shield, based on your experience of Open RAN and your unique perspective, what are the three top pieces of advice you would share with your counterparts and other CSPs who are considering Open RAN? How should they go about it? I think all our counterparts and operators uh, are, are very educated about what is happening on Open RAN. And I think industry as a whole, you, we are at MWC and you have seen a Pretty much every booth in Hall 1, 2 would be talking about Open RAN and maturity of systems. I think all our colleagues and, and other operators, and we have been very active in operator circle also talking to each other, sharing our experiences. I think other CSPs are also motivated. My messages will be very simple. Uh, there is a lot of uh, messaging around how difficult it is to integrate the system. Our experience has been different. We, we found it very uh, exciting and it's it's very close group work that that you do and you know there is there is a sense of camaraderie when you work with multiple suppliers and uh, it's not as complicated at, as as it has been said it's very straightforward we we could do this system integration work in less than six months of time uh, so that's definitely one that if you want to do it uh, I think system is mature now and you should try it go ahead and try now that's a good point Sashil makes. Three years ago, when we started with Verizon, system integration, integration of components cost them more than it does today. The industry has, and the ecosystem has evolved and matured to the point where these integration points are now minimal. TCO is always on the top of mind of all CSPs. And TCO, what we've heard and seen is that it's at parity with traditional RAN. And over time, with vendor diversity, um, we believe that cost will actually go down. So you'll get the innovation from an open system at a cost that's lower than traditional RAN solutions. I would like to double click on the TCO aspect. It's uh, not just that, it's, TCO is definitely slightly better than traditional RAN. Uh, you, you were very kind to say this, is, <laughs> it, there's a parity. We are, we are very vocal that the TCO is a bit better, but that's not what you see on day one. On day one, you'll see, okay, I'm a bit lower than the traditional RAN, but over the period of time, now, since your focus is more software-based and you, you have kind of removed your dependence on hardware, now you have capability to improve your TCO on a regular basis. You can push the software capabilities further you know, north and then you, you will have more capacity and you can introduce new technologies which can do better resource management and whatnot. So basically, you're able to now yield more performance out of the system that is deployed. Right, and that, that's just additional TCO saving that will keep coming, and uh, you know, that is something that you not, can't, can't counter for on day one. So I think we are looking forward to having more and more TCO saving. With that's good that. to hear, Sushil. Yeah. And finally, Sushil, how important was the ecosystem in your decision? And moving forward, how do you see the ecosystem evolving to accelerate the deployment of ORAN? I think the ecosystem of Open RAN is quite mature today. So in MWC, you have seen there are tons of radio suppliers. There is a fair bit of uh, cloud uh, supplier group as well. Uh, not everyone has same level of maturity when it comes to cloud platform. There are only few who has really done some commercial deployment. And on the radio stack side, it's, it's Samsung is, is really working hard and Ericsson and Nokia have their own perspective. But I think uh, from ecosystem of, of component perspective, it's pretty mature. You have multiple vendor choices across hardware, on the cloud platform, OS, as well as in, on the radio and, and DU application. I think our ecosystem is quite mature to our, for adoption. And from here, it's going to accelerate more and more for sure. Scott, Sushil, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.